Shabbos. While everyone's taking their seat, we have uh, spent the last several weeks talking that it's not enough to simply be Jewish, you have to do Jewish. So I bring books. Rebecca, my wife, has a chapter. She donated these books called Kaddish, A Woman's Voices. Someone want to read? There we go. All right, and now we have teenagers. So I'm going to go over this way. We have Shabbos Candlesticks. been thinking about freedom this week, the meaning of freedom. Of course, our week began with the State of the Union Address. Now, interesting, just by a show of hands, how many people watch the actual State of the Union? All right, pretty good. By comparison, just so you should know, 32 million people watched this, the actual State of the Union this week. 32 million people. It's pretty good. It's about 10% of the country. How many people, just out of curiosity, watch the New England Patriots against the Indianapolis Colts? Okay. So I, I looked that number up too, and, and 42 million people watch the Colts Patriots football game. 42 million people watch the football game. 32 million people watch the State of the Union. Now that's freedom. The truth be told, many of us don't actually watch the State of the Union address. We like to follow the commentators and their opinions in the State of the Union address. So I actually paid a lot of attention to Facebook. And you know there was a hashtag, SOTU, State of the Union. And people were lighting up all over Facebook talking about the State of the Union address. Now I'm guessing, of course, the majority of those people could have already figured out what they were going to post about it even before the president spoke. That's freedom. And of course, the late night commentators, they also spent plenty of time talking about the State of the Union address. Jimmy Kimmel actually did a thing on his late night talk show where he went around and he interviewed people about the, their opinions on the State of the Union before the speech was given. And it was amazing to watch all these people express an opinion about the State of the Union, what the President said or didn't say, how he said it, what they liked about what he said, and he hadn't actually given the speech yet. There was even someone got a whole exchange about the President's time and how much he liked the President's time and how unique it was. The President hadn't even selected his time yet. Nevertheless, people were already expressing their opinions about the man. That's freedom. What an amazing thing it is to live in a country where the leader of the country can get up and express his vision or her vision of the country, and we can disagree. We can disagree. We can argue. We can doubt. We can also agree. We can applaud. We can support. What an amazing thing to live in a country where we have the right to express ourselves no matter what the leader of, the, of, of our country happens to say. That's freedom. Now, of course, as our founders structured our country, they sought to create a country based on freedom from. Freedom from oppressive government. Freedom from people telling us what to do and what to believe and how to act. Coming out of the monarchy in England, the framers of our great country sought to create a freedom from so that we truly have freedom to. Freedom from all of those things so we have the right to speak, so that we have the right to believe and practice the way we want. And the entire Bill of Rights is, is a declaration of what we have the freedom to do. They establish a freedom from, so that we have a freedom to. What an amazing gift the founders of the United States of America gave us. We have the freedom to entirely ignore the State of the Union address and watch football instead. That's freedom. We read in our Torah portion this morning, Parashat Boat. And as our Bar Bar Mitzvah told us so beautifully earlier, we are really on the cusp of freedom in our Torah portion. 
We read of the last three plagues of the ten plagues. And our ancestors are just about to go free the night of the tenth plague. And God says to Moses to tell our ancestors, the very first thing you should do as free people is set your own calendar. You are now in control of time. That's freedom. You can wake up when you want, and you can go to sleep when you want, and you can eat when you want. You can live your life on the schedule you want. That's freedom. And of course, here we celebrate Shabbat, really the most amazing gift of freedom of all. We have the ability to not do any of that. We have the ability to stop working. We have the ability to find meaning, to study, to learn, to be with community, to celebrate with friends and with family. That's freedom. That's an amazing gift from God. And just after God commands Moses to tell the Israelites that they now are in control of their own time as free men and women, they control their own time, the very next thing that God does is to set up the holiday of Passover. And in it, God says to the Israelites, select lambs, and you're going to slaughter those lambs, and you're going to put blood on the doorposts. And of course, we know that's really our early mezuzot. Right? And our putting mezuzahs on the doorposts match that putting of the blood on the doorposts as the Malach HaMavit, as the angel of death, Hasach, protected or passed over those lands of our ancestors. And so they were able to do that, but not only was it about putting the blood on the lamp, on the, on the doorpost so that the angel of death knew which homes to pass over, but also one of the lead Egyptian deities was a lamb. So now imagine the statement that God says to the Israelites, slaughter the Egyptian god right in front of everyone. You show who is really in charge. That's freedom. And so they did, but not only that, they were actually able to sit down then to a family dinner and celebrate being free men and women together as a family. What an amazing gift God gave them and God gives us each and every Passover that we come together as family and reenact that freedom from servitude by leading Jewish lives. That's freedom. God specifically gave our ancestors there that night before the tenth plague, but all the more so at Sinai when He gave us the Torah and gave us the 613 meat smoke. God gave us freedom from that we might have freedom to. Moses told Pharaoh, let my people go, that they may worship me. We sing the song, When Israel was an Egypt land, You know it. But it's only half of the verse. Let my people go, that they might worship me. God gave us freedom from an earthly ruler, so that we could serve God. So that we could worship God through our rituals, through our Jewish rituals. But also so that we could worship God by reaching out to those who are in need. To raising up the lowly. To free those who were slaves because each and every year we remember that we too were slaves. Now, God gave us freedom from. That we can have freedom to. And even the founders of our great country, some... Two and a half centuries ago, they also fought and died that we could have freedom from, in order that we can have freedom to. Now, I'm not sure when God set us forth from slavery in Egypt, He had football in mind. But nevertheless, we have this incredible freedom. We have choice and free will on how we're going to live our lives. Righteousness, or whatever the opposite thereof is. This week, on Tuesday, we're going to celebrate, commemorate, the 70th anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz. More than a million people were murdered at Auschwitz. And in January of 1945, when the Allies went in and they liberated the concentration, the concentration camp, that death camp, they found 7,000 people. More than a million were killed. They found 7,000. I can't even begin to imagine what that sense of freedom was like. Were they scared? 
Were they excited? Grateful? I would imagine all of those emotions. And so as we think about our own lives, and we think about our right to watch football, as we think about our freedom to give, to, to celebrate the United States of America, as we think about our responsibility and our freedom as Jews, let's remember that in each and every generation there are those who are enslaved. There are those who don't have the freedom we have. And now this Shabbos of Parashat Bo, let's take a moment and reflect on our freedom. Is the way we're living our lives the way God wanted us to live them when He set us free thousands of years ago in Egypt? Are we living our lives the way the framers of the United States of America wanted us to lead our lives in freedom? Are we leading our lives the way those men and women who were redeemed from Auschwitz, liberated from the horrors of World War II, are we living our lives in such a way that gives honor to their sacrifice, to what they went through? Are we living the freedom we ought to be living? Now, if I could ask a, a favor, if there are Holocaust survivors in the room and you're able to stand, will you please stand? If there are soldiers who fought in World War II in the room, if you're able to stand, you can stand. All of our men and women who fought to defend the freedoms in our country, the veterans of the United States Armed Forces, if you would please stand. And now all of us who are grateful for the incredible freedoms we have in this country, all of us, please rise. Eloheinu, Elohei, Eloheinu, Bimoteinu, our God and God of our ancestors, help us to give thanks for the incredible freedoms that you provided us thousands of years ago, and the freedom that you provide us each and every day. Let us be grateful for the men and women who suffered in the name of freedom. Let us give thanks for the men and women who put their lives on the line in order to give us and keep our freedom. Our God and God of our ancestors, keep us ever free in this country and in the state of Israel, so that we might serve you with a full heart and in righteousness, that we might make choices with our free will, that celebrates our freedom and gratitude, in which we realize how blessed we are. And may we realize our obligation in our freedom to reach out to all who are in need, to bring tikkun, to bring repair to this world. May we remember that we were slaves in Egypt and care for all those who were enslaved throughout the world, bringing them freedom as well. God be with us now. Help us in our gratitude. Bless us in our freedom. And let us say together. Amen. We remain standing for the Hasikadish, page 155.